All right, so everyone's talking about AI right now, and especially all the buzz around Meta's upcoming software, Llama 4. Yeah, feels like it's everywhere. It really does. So we're going to dive into Llama 4 today, and we've got a bunch of different sources for this one. We've got a super lively Reddit thread going on. Oh, yeah, those Redditors don't hold back. Not at all. Yeah. And then we've got some articles from the Financial Times. It's always good for the in-depth analysis. Exactly. Yeah. And we've even got some snippets from Zuckerberg himself from a recent earnings call transcript. Oh, wow, straight from the source. So basically, Meta is going all in on AI right now, and they're really taking on some huge players like DeepSeek. Yeah, it's a battle for AI dominance for sure. They're betting big that Llama 4 is going to be a total game changer. You listening out there want to know what the hype is all about, right? <laughs> of course they do. That's why they're here. Well, then get ready to dive deep because we're going to unpack everything. Llama 4. It is a fascinating time to be following AI, that's for sure. And you're right, these sources offer some really interesting perspectives, sometimes conflicting perspectives on Llama 4 and what it could mean for the future. So why don't we start with that Reddit thread? Yeah, let's do it. I think I saw some people throwing around the term soda in there. Oh yeah, definitely state of the art. They're already speculating that Llama 4 could be a massive leap forward, potentially even surpassing DeepSeek. It's pretty amazing to see all the excitement but there were some users who were bringing up Meta's, you know, past approach to technology and how it hasn't always been the most open. That's a valid point. Meta's history with data privacy and openness has definitely led to some skepticism. And it'll be interesting to see how they navigate this as they push for an American standard in open source AI. That's right. Zuckerberg used that phrase himself in the earnings call. He did. It seems like he's trying to position Llama 4 as the go-to for developers and researchers here in the U.S. Sort of like an alternative to DeepSeek. Exactly, which has already released its models under a very open MIT license. Okay, so it sounds like it's shaping up to be a bit of a showdown between Meta and DeepSeek. Yeah. But what does all this like open source battle mean for the average person? Well, think of it this way. The more companies embrace open source, the faster AI technology develops. Right. And the quicker we see those advancements trickle down into everyday tools and apps. Imagine like your to-do list managing itself or your travel arrangements being booked automatically based on a quick voice command. Okay, now that's something I can get behind. Mm -hmm. Speaking of voice commands, let's talk about Meta's big focus on voice-powered AI. I mean, the Financial Times article we have here paints a picture of a future where we're interacting with AI more naturally just using our voices. Exactly. It's about moving away from that robotic question and answer format we're used to with current voice assistants and creating a more fluid conversational experience. I like the sound of that. Right. Meta's CPO, Chris Cox, even gave this great example in one of the articles. Picture this AI agents that can automatically file receipts for you. So no more digging through your wallet and manually inputting all that data. Oh, that'd be amazing. Right. But Cox isn't just talking about making our lives easier, though. He sees these AI agents as the future of how businesses operate, streamlining processes and boosting efficiency across the board. So like a small business could offer personalized support to every customer, even if they only have a small team. Exactly. It's a pretty powerful vision. And it ties back to Meta's goal of making AI accessible to everyone, not just huge tech giants. I like that idea. But this level of innovation requires a massive investment. Meta's projected capital expenditure for 2025 is somewhere between 60 and $65 billion. Wow. And a big chunk of that is going towards AI infrastructure. That's serious commitment. Are yeah. we talking like massive data centers, yeah. custom-designed computer chips? All of that optimized for AI workloads. They're even extending the lifespan of their servers to five and a half years, which is interesting because it actually reduces their costs in the long run. So it seems like they're really in it for the long haul. Yeah, it's a smart move. Yeah. Building a robust and efficient infrastructure is key to supporting these ambitious AI projects. Makes sense. But it also raises the question, can they keep up with competitors like DeepSeek who might be finding more cost-effective ways to innovate? That's a great question. Yeah. And one we'll definitely explore further as we kind of dive deeper into Llama 4. But first, I want to go back to that Reddit thread for a moment. Okay. I'm curious to see what those users are saying about the potential impact of AI agents on everyday life. All right, let's see. Uh, here's an interesting comment. One user is worried about AI agents becoming too complex and overwhelming, similar to how some people find Facebook's interface frustrating. Oh, yeah, I can see that. It's a valid concern. Just because we can create super intelligent AI agents doesn't mean we should ignore user experience. Right. It's all about balance. Exactly. You know, that makes me think about the potential for voice-powered AI 
to change how we interact with technology overall. Yeah. I mean, if we're moving towards a future where we're talking to our devices more, how will that impact things like design and accessibility? It's a huge question. And the Financial Times article even mentioned that Meta might be developing lightweight headsets as replacements for smartphones. Really? With voice interaction as a core feature. That's wild. So if we connect the dots here, it seems like Meta's vision for the future revolves around this interconnected web of AI agents, voice interfaces, and wearable technology. It's an exciting concept, hmm. but also kind of daunting if you think about it. Yeah, for sure. Let's dive deeper into these ideas in part two of our deep dive into Llama 4. Picking up where we left off, this idea of replacing smartphones with these lightweight headsets is super intriguing. Yeah, I mean, it really makes you wonder how voice-powered AI is going to shape the way those devices are designed. Yeah, like, are we going to see, like, a shift towards even more intuitive voice interfaces as AI gets more sophisticated? I would hope so. I'm all for, like, ditching these tiny screens and the constant notifications. But I can't help but think, like, what about people who aren't that tech savvy? You know, will this voice-powered AI future leave anyone behind? That's such an important consideration. Accessibility, like, really has to be a top priority as we develop these new technologies. We don't want to end up creating a digital divide between people who can easily navigate this new world and those who can't. Right. It's like building a city with only skyscrapers and no ramps or elevators. Not everyone can climb 100 flights of stairs. Exactly. We need to make sure everyone has the tools and support they need to participate fully in this AI-powered future. I totally agree. And, you know, that brings us back to Meta's push for an American standard in open source AI. Yeah. It's not just about competition with DeepSeek, right? No, it's about creating a level playing field where everyone has the opportunity to benefit from these advancements regardless of their technical expertise. So it's more about fostering collaboration and innovation rather than like locking everyone into a specific platform or ecosystem. Yeah, exactly. It's like building a public park instead of a private club. Everyone's welcome. I like that analogy. <laughs> and that open approach could lead to some really exciting developments in voice powered AI. Remember that Financial Times article mentioned Meta's desire to make conversations with their AI models more natural and two-way? Yeah, like actually being able to have a conversation. Exactly. Imagine being able to interrupt your AI assistant, ask clarifying questions, or even have a back-and-forth discussion just like you would with a human. Yeah, no more awkwardly phrasing everything like you're talking to a search engine. Right. But how do you even begin to teach an AI to handle all the nuances and complexities of human conversation? Well, that's where Llama 4 comes in. It's being designed as an omni model, which means it can process voice input directly without having to convert it to text first. Yeah. And this allows for a more seamless and responsive interaction. It's like having a conversation with someone who understands you perfectly, even if you jump between topics or speak in a roundabout way. Okay, now we're getting into some pretty technical territory here. Yeah. Can you break down what an omni model is and why it's such a big deal? Sure. Think of it this way. Current voice assistants rely on separate systems for speech recognition, language understanding, and response generation. It's a bit clunky and inefficient. Okay. An Omni model combines all of those functions into a single integrated system. Oh, wow. Making the whole process much smoother and more natural. So it's like having a single brain that can handle everything related to voice interaction instead of like three separate brains trying to communicate with each other. Exactly. And that streamlined architecture could lead to some really significant improvements in accuracy speed and overall user experience. Wow. It's a major step towards creating truly conversational AI. This is all starting to sound really futuristic. Yeah. But I think it's important to remember the potential downsides too. You know, that Reddit user who compared AI agents to Facebook's interface had a point. Mm -hmm. We don't want to create a world where we're constantly bombarded with complex AI systems that are more frustrating than helpful. You're absolutely right. It's crucial to remember that AI is a tool. And like any tool, it can be used for good or for ill. We need to be mindful of the potential impact on society, both positive and negative, as we develop these technologies. It's like giving a chain thought to a toddler. Powerful tools require responsible users. We need to make sure we're building AI systems that enhance our lives, not complicate them. I couldn't agree more. And that's why it's so important to have these conversations to consider the ethical implications and to ensure that we're developing AI in a way that benefits all of humanity. Well said. Speaking of benefits, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about how AI agents could transform the way businesses operate. Meta's head of business AI, 
Clara Shee painted a pretty compelling picture in one of the articles we read. Oh yeah, definitely. She envisions a future where every business, no matter how small, has an AI agent working tirelessly on its behalf 24-7. Wow. Engaging with customers, finding new leads, and even handling complex tasks. It's like having a dedicated team of virtual assistants, but powered by AI and able to operate at a scale and speed that would be impossible for humans. I can see how that would be a huge game changer, especially for small businesses that often struggle to keep up with the demands of the digital world. Yeah, it's like leveling the playing field and giving everyone access to the same powerful tools. I like that. And that accessibility is key to Meta's vision. Yeah. They want to make AI a democratizing force, empowering businesses of all sizes to thrive in the digital age. It's a bold vision. Yeah. And it's certainly generating a lot of buzz. Mm. But can Meta really pull this off? And remember, they're facing stiff competition from companies like DeepSeek, who are already making waves in the open source AI space. It's true. And let's not forget about that massive investment required to build and maintain the infrastructure needed to support these ambitious AI projects. You raise some very valid points. It's a high stakes game and there's no guarantee of success. Right. But Meta is clearly committed to this vision and they're putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah investing heavily in research and development, building those massive data centers, and even designing custom silicon chips that are optimized for AI workloads. It's like they're building a rocket ship to Mars. It's a risky and expensive undertaking, but the potential rewards are huge. Yeah, and just like with any space exploration mission, there will be challenges along the way. But Meta seems determined to push the boundaries of what's possible with AI, and they're not afraid to take risks. I'm definitely intrigued to see where this journey takes us. Mm. But before we get too carried away with all the possibilities, I think it's important to take a step back and consider the potential downsides of this AI-powered future. For sure. What are some of the things that we need to be mindful of as we move forward? That's a great question and one that deserves careful consideration. I mean, we've already touched on the importance of accessibility and responsible AI development. Right. But there are other concerns as well such as the potential impact on jobs, the risk of bias in AI algorithms, and the need for clear ethical guidelines to govern the use of AI. Yeah. These are all complex issues that we need to address as a society if we want to create an AI-powered future that benefits everyone. It sounds like we have a lot to unpack in the final part of our deep dive into Llama 4. It's been really interesting talking about Llama 4 and all of Meta's like ambitious plans for AI. It has, and you know, it's clear they're not just focused on the technology itself, right? but also on the bigger picture, like how it's going to affect businesses and people's everyday lives. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they're really painting a picture of this future where AI is just seamlessly integrated into everything we do, making our lives easier, more efficient, and hopefully, you know, more fulfilling. Yeah. It's like they're saying, hey, we know tech can be kind of a pain sometimes. <laughs> But trust us on this one. This is going to be different. This is going to make things better. And they're backing up those claims with some pretty solid examples. I mean, remember Chris Cox talking about those AI agents that could like handle things like filing your receipts and scheduling your appointments? Oh, yeah. Those are the things that people can really wrap their heads around. Totally. It's like, OK, now I get it. AI could actually be useful for me. But, you know, let's go a little deeper here. What about the even bigger picture? How could these AI agents actually change the way businesses work? Well, Clara Shi, who's the head of business AI at Meta, actually had some really fascinating thoughts on this. Yeah. She thinks that AI agents are going to become like essential tools for businesses, just as important as having a website or an email address. Wow. So like every business, big or small, would have this 24-7 AI rep working for them. That's the idea. It's like having an entire team of virtual employees, but they never sleep. They never take breaks. They're always learning and they can process information so much faster than we can. But wouldn't that like lead to huge job losses? I mean, that's one of the big worries people have about AI. It's a valid concern for sure. And it's something we need to be talking about as a society. You know, we need to start thinking about how we can retrain people for the jobs of the future. Jobs that will involve working with AI systems instead of competing with them. So it's kind of like the Industrial Revolution all over again, except instead of machines replacing physical labor, it's AI replacing cognitive labor. Yeah, in a way. It's a massive shift, and it's yeah. going to require us to really rethink how we approach work and education. But, you know, I'm trying to be optimistic about this. Yeah. I think we can find ways to make this work. Me too. It's not about humans versus AI, right? It's about finding ways to use AI to enhance what we do best as humans. Things like our creativity, hmm. our empathy, and our ability to think critically. Exactly. Yeah. And that brings us back to this idea of ethical AI development. 
we have to make sure we're building AI that aligns with our values and that ultimately benefits all of us. Absolutely. It's like we're writing the rule book for a whole new world, a world where AI is a really significant role. And we need to make sure those rules are fair and just and promote the well-being of everyone. Well said. And, you know, Meta's focus on open source AI seems like a good step in that direction. It is. It encourages transparency, collaboration, and a more democratic approach to AI development. So it's not just a few big companies controlling everything. Right. It becomes more of an open ecosystem where everyone can contribute and benefit. And that's what makes this whole conversation so exciting. You know, we're at this really pivotal moment and we have the power to shape the future of AI in a way that reflects our values and aspirations. It's a bit like being on a rocket ship. <laughs> We know it's going to be an incredible journey, but we don't quite know where we'll end up. But that's the beauty of it, right? It's a journey of discovery and exploration. And while there will be bumps along the way, I really believe we can work together to create an AI-powered future that's both innovative and beneficial for everyone. I hope so. So to everyone listening out there, we encourage you to keep learning, keep exploring, and keep asking questions. This world of AI is changing so quickly, and it's up to all of us to stay informed and engaged. Absolutely. And don't forget, Lamicon AI is coming up on April 29th. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a great chance to hear from some leading experts and stay up to date on all the latest developments. And if you have any thoughts or questions about anything we've talked about today, we would love to hear from you. You can leave us a comment on our website or reach out to us on social media. Yeah, we're always happy to chat. So until next time... Keep diving deep into this world of knowledge and innovation. We'll be here to guide you every step of the way.